hello and welcome to the channel welcome back if you've been here before now today is the final day of the build of my Austin K2Y ambulance in 135th scale from Gecko Models yes the Gecko KT today I'll be finishing up all the little bits and pieces of build I'll be doing a little bit of weathering not very much weathering just dirtying it up a little bit uh, making the tyres look used and then I'll be building a very straightforward and simple diorama base on which to show off my Katie and the figure of the Princess Elizabeth that it came with that's already been painted I should say. So if you like the video please remember by giving us the imperial thumbs up down there on the like button and do subscribe to the channel for more content all you have to do click on that small button down there and then click on the bell logo and then you'll get a notification whenever i put up a new video it saves you having to look for it none of that costs you anything if you're of a mind to support future productions you can do so through things like super thanks or any of my partner programs all the information for those are in the information box below where they belong so let's get on then and pick up from the last show and finish off this model of the Gecko Models 135th scale Austin K2Y Katie Ambulance. It's time to go round the model now doing all those bits and pieces that I've been avoiding. Uh, mainly because most of them are photo etch and I don't like photo etch very much. So I'm putting these mud flaps on here. Um, they go on the front flaps according to the photo I saw from the Imperial War Museum and I'm happy to go with that. Let's just get it dangling vertically and let it set there like that. That's cool. Okay, this tiny little Red Cross badge fits on the front. There's a little uh, tab for it to sit on. Right in the middle, like so. I don't know why they have these. I guess that there's going to be a reason why they have them, obviously. Um, I just don't know what it is. Because, let's face it, there are one or two bigger Red Cross badges here. Maybe it's for people in the review mirror, they can see a tiny Red Cross badge. But at the back, I mean, you know, you've got the doors covered in Red Cross badge. Anyway, I didn't design it, so let's put them on. At least they're um, plastic, they go on fairly easily. I've already done the decals for them on the top surface there. So they can go on, just make sure they're down a little bit further. There we go, there we are. And across a bit. Right, so the job I can't put off any longer is putting the vents on here. But I can put, I can't, putting the vents on isn't the problem, of course. What's going to be a problem is painting the blasted things to match this red cross that they've put on here without any help. So that's going to be a problem there. That's going to be not quite such a problem. That one. Because um, it's got red. Yeah, still pretty rubbish, isn't it? Okay, well, we'll figure out what's doing about that in a little while when it's dry. You know how, like, you, when you're, you're building a kit, you kind of keep all the rubbish jobs right to the very end? Yeah? Well, this is one of those rubbish jobs. Dealing with the cross on the top here with the um, with these vents in place now. So what I'm, I've done, for some reason, there was an extra red cross on the decal sheet. I've been around the thing and I've, I've double checked that I have actually put on all the big red crosses. There, There's not a surface I could put a big red cross that hasn't already got one. So what I did is I cut it up just to give me um, a colour reference but also to give me a bit of spare to do things like the corner here. Now if I, looking from straight above, fiddle around a bit 
that's pretty much where well, no actually it's not that needs to be down a little bit there. There, okay that can be there that can be there okay so from dead above that works okay i'll do the other now what i'm going to do is so i'm going to give them a bit of um fix on their decal fix and then i'm going to let them dry down a bit and after that i might be able to trim them and finesse some edges and won't have quite so many holes to fill then so there won't be so much to see um with the correct you know the painting in bits which is what i really don't want to be doing i mean you know again all the detail they go to in this damn kit and uh they leave you with this on the decals it's it's not actually pretty annoying you know it's it's almost like they're saying yeah hey, we can't be bothered with decals decals we don't do decals you know you talk to you talk to our supplier they do decals we don't do decals what are you talking about decals that's not my problem well i think it is actually so anyway i'm going to leave those there i'm going to um just get some decal wash Take a wash in my model minutes tray. Yay! Thanks, Matt. Still using it, mate. Still doing a wonderful job. And I'm just going to just begin to knock that down a bit and get that to start adhering over the edge. Um, and I'm going to let that dry a lot. At the front of the Katie here, I've got the uh, two top parts of the bonnet. I've glued them together because I want both of them open. And I'm just going to place them in the middle like so. Now what I do have to do is create some sort of um, support, some sort of um, rods to go in to support them open because they would have something so i'll probably just do a little bit of um brass wire or something like that just to put in place there right whilst i was um, messing around at the front end there the decals have dried and i've now put in the missing white and red on the top over the vents the white is is kind of a good match. I think it might just I might use an insignia white or something like that as well. The ones I've put on at the moment is this uh, dead white seventy two double oh one from Game Color Vallejo Game Color mainly because it's really dense white. So it's kind of done the job, but I need to cover it with something. It's just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more sort of bluey grey in the background. The red. I'm really happy with um, I used the 7817 model color scarlet um, to begin with RLM 23 as well and that pretty much worked straight away now under these lights it works it might be in the morning with some daylight coming in it would look different that my friends is called metamorism with uh, the what is it the apparently looking the same when actually the spectrum the power spectrum of the color is different see i remember all this now i remember this from 40 years ago metamorism this is called so um it's why you know when you try and color match something if you do it under one light but you actually look at it under another light sometimes they don't match anymore it's a really weird effect look it up on google it's really interesting well it's interesting to me anyway so the upside of that is I'm almost there with the white, but I think the Scarlet absolutely nailed it first time, and I'm really happy about that. Next on the wonderful world of the very small, I am going to put on this little plate here that's part of the headlamp assembly. More, more delightful photo etch. Right, now for the headlamp units. Um, first in is this bit that sits in that piece of photo which we just put in. Okay, that's all very nice. Then underneath it, 
can't believe I'm doing this. Underneath it goes another bracket. This one here. Yeah, that's how small it is. And I'm going to pop that in now. It says a bobbly end that goes into the bonnet and then the flatter end I guess goes underneath the underneath the lamp holder and I've also got to put the rear view mirror stalks in as well And we'll wait for these to be completely dry before we put the mirrors on. The headlamp supports should have had enough time to set now. So I'm going to put the headlamps on. Now I'm using the shielded ones because the you don't actually see on I haven't seen a, a photo like the one at the Imperial War Museum. I haven't seen a photo of the front of the KT. So there seems to be two. There's the one that's in pieces or, or that's being worked on next to the Tilly. That ain't got any headlamps at all because they've all been taken off. And there's a like a a blanket or something wrapped around this this hood piece. On the one that poses within regular uniform rather than in overalls. Um, you can't see the headlamps but the Tilly that she was working on had uh, the shaded headlamps so that's what I'm going for last couple of bits of photo etching out and these are the windows supports I'm only having the windows a bit open because otherwise they'd impact on the open bonnet here. And yes, I am going to touch up the paint on the open bonnet before you mention it. Do you know what? That kind of lines up. That, as they say, will do. Okay, I was wrong. The last piece of photo etch is this insanely detailed wash uh, wiper arm windscreen wiper arm you know you that I'm afraid is, is the best it's going to be right so I'll let that dry and then it can go on to the other photo etch bits on the windshield Right, so I'm going to put the window glass in now. I am, honestly. Honestly, I'm going to put this window glass in. Almost said a rude word. Right, so it's got to sit on the supports and connect up at the top there. Maybe if I do it like this, it'll be easier. If I hide it from you, you won't see what a mess I'm making. There, like that. Will ye stay? Will ye stay like that? Of course you won't. That's how it's going to be for a little while. Okay, so next this um, this engine cover, like the side louver of the window of the engine goes on just clears the window very just i might have to do a little bit of finessing there finessing not as in knock the bleeding window off you're only supposed to blow the bleeding window off you can tell this kit's getting to me can't you right that's going to go in there let's let's establish one thing that has to go there and gravity will tell us where it sits 
Right, another problem with this, I, I should have thought about it ahead of time. The hinges here, when you raise the bonnet, the hinges become very slanted and so the upper hinge here means that the, the side flap actually pushes quite a long way back and you can't have the window open now. I've got the window open. I'm not undoing the window because it took me forever to do. So I'm just going to lean that against that. Probably somewhere in the driver's equivalent of pilot's notes, you know, in the driver's instructions, it probably says, on no account, open the driver's window whilst you're opening the driver's side bonnet. And not having read those instructions, I have. So there's a bit of an overlap now. I don't want to cut into anything uh, to make it fit. So I'm, I, I don't know whether to just leave it or... don't really want to close the bonnet on that side either, to be honest with you, because I quite like the seeing the dynamo. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'll probably just leave it as it is. I don't think I can work this out any other way. And the last thing we can do for the moment is put the rear view mirrors on. Um, the more eagle-eyed among you will notice, I haven't put the doors on the back yet, but I'm not going to until I've done the diorama base and it's ready to go on that because I know I will knock the doors off several times whilst fitting the truck to the ambulance to the diorama. I don't really want to be doing that. I don't Hopefully, yet, yeah, as I say, they'll drive roughly in the right place. And then we will be ready to do some weathering. Now, I'm going to be doing some weathering, and I recently acquired this rather gorgeous set of um, weathering pencils, AK weathering pencils. They do all sorts of wonderful things like sand and dust and rust and all the rest of it, smoke, dirty white, buff, whatever, all sorts of fab dust and dust marks. I love that. Um, I'll be having a play with these. Most of the weathering is going to be a little bit of darkening bits and pieces, a bit of shading to do, but then also there's going to be a lot of dusty bits on because having a look at the pictures of the time the trucks were actually more dusty than than sort of grimy if you know what i mean so they're going to be lots of bits of little dusty bits going on there as well as some panel washing and just a little bit of detail raising as it were so i'll let the truck dry for the moment and then i'll come back in a little bit and start playing with my new toys so what i'm doing is just adding sort of bits of edges of dust here and we're just going to knock those back with some water on a brush because I don't want them too harsh but I um, want them to be reasonably visible so let's go around it, all the edges and the sides and stuff like that all these standout bits Then get a little brush, just a bit of water, not too much water, because I don't want to move too much water around here, and just sort of edge it right into the pieces here on the side. Sort of mixing it in a bit. So we just edge that down a bit. And any dust is really going to collect into these little sorts of cracks along the side and the water sort of tends to go into those naturally. So it's a bit like having a very, very localised wash really. Okay then, what I have got here is a piece of sort of fairly fine grained but very thin foam. Now this is going to be like the texture of the asphalt 
but we're going to you know mess it up a bit and judge it up a bit whatever so what i'm going to do is i've got the board out of the frame i'm using a just a very simple black frame um just bought from the local craft shop it was on sale half price so i thought that would do me taking the glass out obviously and dispose of it very carefully and then i'm just going to cut around the foam here now don't throw the foam away because we're going to test something on it later on we're going to test the effect of hairspray on it because we're going to use hairspray to keep some of the um, materials in place particularly sort of um, grit and sand we're going to put on here as well so we're going to want a spare bit to test on so there we go that's that's the the uh, foam and so you've got like a frame here and the foam's going to sit like that basically so what i'm going to do is mask off these edges as well uh, glue the foam down and then we can start figuring out where things are going where things are going um, including the katie which will go sort of kind of about there really and a queen figure here princess elizabeth i should say at the time just to sort of balance, the doors will be open so that will balance out the position here okay i might, might put a bit of uh, greenery up here just some tufts of something up there just to make it look a bit different okay let's uh, get on then and mask all this off and then start looking at how we can make this a bit more like some asphalt um, one thing I'm going to do first of all, because I'm going to glue the uh, foam to this board. This board's got quite a shiny surface. I just want to make double sure that the glue will stick to it properly. So I'm just roughening up the edge with the knife. I mean, it'll probably stick anyway, but I just want to be absolutely sure. And so here's our um, foam base. It's got a really annoying sticker on the back of it, which I'm trying to get off, but I don't want to distort the foam doing it. Well, thank you to the craft store for doing that. That's really helpful. Okay, well, that, that's going to be under the corner where the, uh, f the bits of um, foliage are going to go. Okay, so just smooth it down, make sure it's nice and flat and into the corners properly. It will scoot around a little bit. And then just leave it, leave it alone for, I don't know, an hour, I guess, just to be absolutely sure that it's all absolutely, absolutely snug. So yeah, leave it about an hour and uh, go off and do some other things. Now I've got this like really, really fine sand. What I'm gonna do is just sprinkle it about a bit first. It's a general, it's just a bit of texturing um, on top of the foam because the foam will look just like foam, but with this little bit of texture to it, it will look a lot more like tarmac. But what we can do also is just sprinkle some like the edge of the over here when you're going to get the vegetation sprinkle a bit more there because dust and bits of grit and whatever will tend to congregate next to sort of natural barriers maybe just like bits and pieces right so what i'm going to do is give this um some dark gray this is gunship gray medium gunship gray just to take down the the tones a bit there's I think they're a bit bright and harsh um, and also get rid of this rusty color a little bit okay so hopefully you can see we've still got the grittiness but we've got um, a simple sort of base color now I'm not too bothered about making it even because you know dusty bits of tarmac aren't even colors so 
there we go I'm happy with that okay and then what I'm going to do is just a very sort of oblique angle just sort of spray a tiny bit and with a slightly lighter gray and that just catch some of this texture and just just bring out the edge of the highlights now up in this corner where I'm up here where I'm gonna, I've got the sort of bit more gravelly I'm going to put like vegetation in this part here um, what I thought of doing was just maybe putting a line of white rocks here you know like they've been painted because in the photos the background trees and I'm not going to put a load of trees in the background so I'm just going to put like a little bit of a, a verge if you like so I'm going to put some white rocks like they've been whitewashed white rocks up here and then some soil behind it maybe and then a load of um, bits of foliage as well um, so I'm just going to add just a little bit of a sandy edge to it um, for where I put the rocks okay up here in the corner I'm adding some mud texture this is actually the new Humbrol smart mud well they call it smart mud I don't know what makes it smart but that's what they call it so what I'm going to do next is pick out um, a selection of rocks from this this is the uh, army painter battlefield rocks stuff it all comes it all comes as all different sizes really um, but pick out a, a few sort of lumps of rock that look like they could be edging ro rocks, edging stones. I'll put those on with a bit of glue and then I'll paint them white afterwards. So finally, the kit's complete. I can carefully place it on the tarmac, like so. And I have in the background been painting a figure of the Princess Elizabeth, Her Royal Highness as she was then, Her Majesty as she very soon became. And I'm really happy with it. I'll show it you. There we go. You see that? There we go. Um, we'll look closer in a bit. And Princess Elizabeth just stands there. Lovely, very happy. Now you notice there's quite a lot of space here. What I'm planning on doing eventually is having this a little bit further over having an austin tilly here and her majesty standing about there but for the moment just for the moment this is the arrangement i've got And so my friends, that is it. Quite the journey, I think you'll agree. It's been quite a hard set of videos to watch, I'm sure. It's been quite a hard set of videos to make, I can promise you. Not looking forward to doing anything with quite so much photo edge at any time soon. However, I'm glad I made it. I'm very glad I made it. I will leave it a little while before I build a 135th scale Austin Tilly as a companion vehicle to finish off the diorama really but for the moment I'm very happy with what I've done and I hope you th think it's uh, a kind of a fitting little tribute to her late majesty that's all from me thank you very much for watching um, do remember to like it if you did by clicking the button down there and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to get more videos and also have a look at the back catalogue as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.